Jason, you're BMC's top executive for worldwide marketing, mm -hmm. and that includes your award-winning executive briefing program. Mm -hmm. And you're also the top executive for the channel partners and their sales operations as mm -hmm. well. I cannot tell you how pleased I am that you'll spend even a moment with us, because I know you've got other things to do today. <laughs> but tell me a little bit more about what you're up to. Oh, well, first of all, um, you don't have to be thankful. I mean, we, we, we do a lot of work with your organization, and you're always willing to do whatever it takes for us. So. There's no problem there. So, um, yeah, I, I have the, the pleasure of running the marketing communications organization at BMC. Um, I've been with BMC for 15 years. Uh, actually, this is my 16th year. Been here a little while now. Um, various different roles yeah. around the company, uh, different geographies. Mm -hmm. um, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm not born and bred in Texas. <laughs> um, so You fit right in. Though. Right, thank you. Very southern <laughs> Texas, very New Zealand Texas. So... We um, market and communications, the customer experience program at BMC, which uh, the EBC, our, our briefing program, is part of. It includes a reference program. It includes management of critical accounts. So mm -hmm. that's a big, important play uh, that, that BMC has. Yeah. And then, of course, the channel organization, which, you know, incremental revenue, everybody in, in every vertical, in every technology space anyway, is trying to find different ways to get to market and we're always investigating mm -hmm. and relying on uh, partners, especially in remote territories. So, you know, the, the, the briefing program ha holds a special place for me. Where does the briefing program fit in the overall sales strategy? Yeah, um, I would tell you and many of the other executives will tell you it's the number one sales tool. Really? Yeah, by far. Um, and that's not, you know, sales tools come and go. Um, but consistently, we're mm -hmm. talking now for many, many years in, in BMC, the, the close rates, the, in, the, uh, the reduction in the sales cycle, the, the increase in the spend, the percentages that we've tracked over um, with Karen and her team over the last eight to nine years, phenomenal, the, the difference they make in a deal mm -hmm. at BMC. So the other thing is that we get to see and present, uh, hear and present our, our message direct and face-to-face -face with the customer. So, you know, if they've made the commitment to come to Houston, mm -hmm. especially in July, August, um, then that's a special commitment, right? To come yeah. here in the summer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it can be rather rather hot. So um, they're, they're dedicating their time. We have a captive audience. We have our A-team, our special people that we know are probably meeting the most customers and can deliver the message the best. Um, they just, even the sales force when they come here, they learn so much mm -hmm. from seeing that process in action. Plus, operationally, it's, this is red carpet, this is silver service, this is white glove, you know, this is really the best experience that you will have. And it's basically, therefore, to the customer a view of, well, this is what it's going to be like doing business with BMC. All right, so it's our way of actually, I guess, selling ourselves to them as well, at the same time as talking about the solutions and the pain points and the value that we'll bring to, to their organization. We know their pain points, we know their drivers, we tailor their message, we solve it, you know, we, we red carpet service them when they come to Houston, and when they get here, every word is delivered in the format that they want to hear it. You know, we've made a serious investment in telepresence now. Um, our major locations that give, give us reach and touch to mm -hmm. more clients and more executives, yep. and BMC and with our customer base, will mean that we can become a, a program, not a center. We don't want this to be a North America program, we want it to be a global program. So field-based briefings are on the rise, dramatically on the rise. So that gets us, makes us train our people in the field for delivery and process mm -hmm. and the way we manage the briefings that are outside the four walls of Houston. Question about your observations in the briefing center mm -hmm. and the briefing program in general. Not too long ago when people came to a center and they went in the building, they kind of expected to sit there as kind of a passive audience and watch or listen to a string of presentations and be fairly passive, but they had, they had license to ask a question mm -hmm. or two along the way. What are you observing now about the expectations that customers have when they come to the program for two-way communications, conversations, interaction? 
And what do the salespeople and the presenters have to do to stay relevant mm -hmm. in, those, in that new situation? So I know that, that, that your organization lives and dies by this as well, but content and delivery have to marry up with everybody that you're in, mm -hmm. that you're in front of. So I think one of the things that I've seen evolve in the last 24, 36 months is you know, uh, technology vendors in particular like to give you a feature function presentation, mm -hmm. right? No question. Let me show you all my bells and whistles. And they, they tend to just throw it all up there and hope that something sticks. I know you, I'm preaching to the converted here, but what we've noticed is the first evolution for us was demonstrable use cases, right? So what is a customer trying to do inside their environment? How do I demonstrate that use case? That was step one. Now it's referenceable, demonstrable use cases. In other mm -hmm. words, take a client that's doing it and get that client to show the prospect what they do. Right? Interesting. Far more compelling than a vendor telling them this is what you've got to do. There's some other customer saying, by the way, these are the things that we do internally to run our IT organization, and here's how we use BMC to do it. That's far more compelling than me saying it or me demonstrating it to the client. Mm -hmm. No question. So um, I, 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 I totally agree that... that that the, the, the evolution that, that our organization has been through is, is definitely that. I would also say that the content needs, it, I'm not there to present to you, right? especially if you're doing these referenceable use cases. I'm there to have a discussion with your organization about the right way um, to deliver IT services. Mm -hmm. right? So you're going to probably challenge me, right? and because my right way might be best practice but you might know something that's unique about your organization or unique about your situation, and therefore you should be, have, be able to challenge me. Mm -hmm. The best yeah. briefings are the ones that are the hardest ones to keep to time because the, the customer, it's, it's a dialogue, it's an interactive session. There's very little PowerPoint, right? In fact, there's a, the, the, the little amount of PowerPoint, the better. There's more of these demonstrable, referenceable situations that you, you, know, you enable and you create the discussion and the client, I always had this joke with our people internally. If a briefing starts at 8 a.m., I know by 10.30, right, 10 o'clock, 10.30, if it's a good or bad briefing. And normally by between 10 and 11, the customer's talking amongst themselves. And the customer's solving the problem in the room mm -hmm. amongst themselves. And we're just there. And we're sometimes participating. Often we're just observing. The customer, the, the session, the actual presentation is off, not being done anymore. This is now, they're having their own discussion. They're building their own formula for success. And I'll always tell somebody with a briefing that the goal that we have is through, as the day evolves, as the day moves, is to get the customer, first of all, when they're coming in with that risk element of why should I work with BMC, that evaporates when they walk in the door and they say, wow, this briefing scene is nice, right? And then when we start having that discussion with them, they go, and they know what they're talking about, and they get my problems. And by lunchtime, the conversation should be turning to, well, how do we get started, mm -hmm. right? What do we do first, right? If, if you're running a really good briefing, by the time you sit down for lunch and you have your, you know, your southern fried chicken <laughs> and potatoes and all the other stuff that I like around here, the conversation's different. It's totally different. So it isn't passive anymore at all. As oh a matter of fact, goodness. that's the last thing you want. Yeah, and, and discussion facilitators, and you know, we've stolen your term. Um, I actually use that when I start the briefing in the morning and we, we, we run through our, uh, this, their, we talk about the agenda and their objectives and I say that these people are sitting here listening in to you now when you give us why you're here and what it's important for you to come to Houston. They're not presenters, they're discussion facilitators. And you better make it a two-way dialogue and make it interactive or it won't be a rewarding experience for either party. Um, and so therefore, you, it's interesting picking the right people, right? Not everybody can, you bet. can do that. That's a, it's a, in some cases, it's a unique skill that I'm, we're always on the lookout for. Um, Karen, the team, we constantly work on who is good at what topic, but not just on the topic content, but on the delivery of that, that content, right? Because that's, if they can, extract the right information and be seen as an expert, yeah. they'll have a far better dialogue. You mentioned a couple of times, and, mm -hmm. and proudly so, and I, don't, I, I, I echo the pride, the awards that have been won over the years by your briefing program. From your executive view, um, mm -hmm. what's, what makes the programs so really truly world class? Yeah, that's a very good question, and I'm always 
you know, looking at it, I would say, uh, first of all, from the very top down, from our chairman and CEO uh, all the way through the organization, there's an understanding that that, that customer experience is, is the most important thing, right? So from the second that we have a nomination um, for, for a briefing where the field says we would like to bring somebody to Houston, there is just incredible focus on the details of what will make that briefing successful, right? And all parts of the value chain need to be considered, mm -hmm. not just when they arrive, but, and you know this, right? If you go to an event and you have a bad travel experience or a bad car experience, a bad food experience, that the whole briefing will be bad, right? And by, before and after. So everybody in that, that process has to be, understand that the customer comes first. The customer experience is the number one thing. The second thing is um, the operational element of doing that only comes alive if, if you have good people. Um, and I'm talking about it now, I get a little, you know, there's a little bit of pride because it's all part of the, whether they're BMCers or, or our, you know, our trusted vendors that we work with in this process, we, we have to individually take pride in that customer experience. And I think the folks that I have in the briefing center they're awesome. They're, they're, I wouldn't swap any of them out there, but I hope they're not going to listen to this. They are, um, <laughs> they, they're absolutely off the charts, um, number one at their profession, number one in their field. And, and they, they do know that 10 o'clock at night, you know, one o'clock in the morning, you know, we've had lost passports, you know, missing people, we've, you know, sick people, um, people that have, you know, suffered, you know, severe illnesses and we've had to look after and, and all parts of the process have had to look up. These, my folks go above and beyond when they do that. Um, we focus, seriously focus on the content. We seriously focus on the people that we use in front of the customers. Um, they're not allowed, it's, this is not accidental, right? You, you do not, I'm not going to put all this investment into running a, a briefing program then at the last minute just throw someone in front of a customer. Right, they have to be trained, they have to be certified, they have to go through a process to get the privilege. And by the way, the people in the field fight to be in the briefing centre because they know that everybody looks at it as, as the mecca of you know, what you can achieve in BMC in front of, in, in, in front of being in front of those customers that Mr Beecham and the executive team says the briefing program helps, so therefore they want to do it. I would also say that, um, that just generally there, there is an acceptance, and I started with this from the top down, if you don't have executive sponsorship in your program, and we get that from, from the chairman and CEO, but you know, we have a person, myself, that sits at the executive leadership team level that owns the briefing program. It's not four levels down in sales, it's not on some periphery and you know, seen as a stepchild over here. It is part of the mainstream. management team. It is mainstream. If we, if we want a market message to be tested, a new initiative to be played out, it goes there first. That's, Interesting. that's how important we see. And we see the voice of the customer, um, which is a program that we run through the EBC, is the way that we take that message back. I have to report monthly to the leadership team. These are the trends we're seeing from customers. Because if you're pitching, you know, AAA, and the customer comes in and goes Z, 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 is it Z or Z, 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 then you, you know, you better change. You better get things right or you're, gonna, you're going down a, a rat hole, basically. So. Talking faster and louder doesn't solve that problem, right? Yeah, I'm, 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 I echo your pride. I mean, the, the program itself, it stands alone as, as world class uh, outside of BMC, but in BMC it's seen as, you know, first class. It's, it's, it's definitely held in that, that regard. Well, you guys chose to, uh, to work with us mm -hmm. five years ago, maybe yes, six at this point in time, and yep. it's been a thrill ride for us. Yes. And I am equally thrilled that it's been so profitable for you. Mm -hmm. What have you gotten from Mandel that's made a real difference for the briefing program? <sighs> wow. Um, how long have we got? <laughs> um, what a nice thing to say. First of all, um, personally. So I got given the job. Right, and I didn't really know what I was being given. I knew how great the program was. I was—I actually got interviewed in Lisbon, um, in Portugal, uh, by our then SVP of Sales and and uh, our chairman and CEO, and I got offered the job. And so, facilitation to me was okay. I'm going to host a session and you know let my personality do its thing. And I learned to be a facilitator, and I now know and understand. And I think the most important role in any briefing is that facilitation role the gel that brings the briefing together and the process that you have taught us to go through to be a, a facilitator was, it was changed me personally. 
um, but I know how critical it is to our program. Um, we have very few people in the company that can do it. Uh, not trying to talk about myself in any particular way, but it's, it's a unique skill. Um, but it's a skill that can be taught. So we have taken what you deliver through facilitation. We now make every person that fits that role go through that training, compulsory. That's one. So that person to me was huge. Even before I came to the program, I've been a user of SIPAB. So um, when I was out in the field and writing content, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping that people understand what SIPAB is, but situation, uh, complication, implication, position, action, benefit, right? I, I have it down pat. <laughs> and, and when I talk about anything I'm thinking in my head, I, it's just natural now. It comes when I do it. So when I see the content, when I see it being delivered, when I'm actually facilitating, or when I see it before the briefing occurs, if it doesn't follow the flow, it doesn't come in. So we use the process through building the content and delivering the content. Uh, Mandel training is compulsory for any individual that wants to, to be a discussion facilitator. Um, uh, you are not allowed to stand up in front of a customer until you've been certified by you. Um, although we don't take any rankings from when you put people through the training, we then ask them to present our content back to a small committee of people um, before we can say tick, you're in, or cross, you're out. So they have to stand and deliver, basically. Correct. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're testing at the same time their knowledge of content, but more importantly, del their delivery. Uh, and I would say probably the, the final thing is the, the level of professionalism that that's just given the whole program. If you think about what we do, and we've t I've talked about some of the, you know, the, the red carpet silver service you get around working in, uh, with the EBC, but when you're in the room, when you're actually in the room, it has to be raised 10 notches from what happens before they get there. When they sit down, they're gonna critique every word that comes out of your mouth, everything they see on the screen. From that point on, if you're not on, switched on, and you, you don't, if you don't capture them in my opening or whoever doing it is doing being the facilitator, and you can't carry that through the day, why do it? Why do it? So, and that's why we have, I guess it's close to a 95% close rate. I think we reduce the sales cycle by a third. Uh, we, we, we've, very close to what the industry trends are, and I think the average deal increases by close to 40, 45% when they come through the briefing program. That is terrific. It's amazing numbers. Great, great information, Jason. I can't tell Thank you how you. much I appreciate it. Some point in time, uh, in the next week or two or three, I'll be showing this videotape to our folks around the world. Could I ask you just to say a word to them? There's people in Asia, there's people in India, there are people in, in uh, EMEA. There's a bunch in the U.S., and they are so thrilled that you would spend any time with me. Okay. <laughs> no problem, my would pleasure. Would you mind just saying something to them as the voice of the customer? Yeah, sure. Um, well, well, first off, uh, I want to thank your organization before we get started. Um, like I said, I got involved just over two and a half years ago in the briefing program, and I was told about Mandel. You are one of the most important elements in the delivery of what is an extremely successful program for BMC. So I appreciate your, your folks go above and beyond every day. Um, and you're, they're brilliant. When we have them here and they're training our people, it's always seen as one of the most valuable training courses that our, that our folks actually go through. The second thing that, that I'd like to say is um, always looking for new ways of doing things, right? Always looking at new ways of being successful. So when we challenged you around tally presence, you delivered. Right, you gave us an executive training course and a process that makes telepresence actually work because it's not a briefing, right? It's like watching a TV screen. It's different. So um, when we challenged your organisation, you've you've done a phenomenal job of stepping up and, and coming coming to the party for us. So thank you for that as well. The voice of the customer, um, I would say, from a, a as a Mandel client. Uh, there's probably right now, apart from the people I have, there's no stronger or better investment that I make in any external, with any external vendor than there is with, with Mandel. I mean, I know that might sound like, like loose words right now on a video, but I can tell you if you want to come and see the results, then the proof's in the pudding, right? I mean, we have, and I'm hoping some of my New Zealand slang works here, <laughs> the, 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 the proof is in the show. Um, we, we run a, a process that's, that's really tight and it wouldn't be if we, we didn't and couldn't rely on, on help from your organization. So I appreciate that. Jason, this has been so valuable for me. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you.